the prophets of old were led by the Holy Spirit and told to write the divine word according to Yahuwah. Many of the prophets of old gave us the most comprehensive and prophetic pictures of what to expect at the end of this age. Even the Messiah himself said, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Many people may be wondering, what do these signs mean and why are they happening? You see, Yahuwah has seen the affliction of his people who cry out in the land of their captivity. And just like in the land of Egypt, when Pharaoh didn't let the children of Israel go free, and Yahuwah had to send plagues upon the land of Egypt, so shall he do in our current captivity. Let's take a look at what the heathens are saying about the sign of judgment that Yahuwah is sending on June 10th, 2021. It reads, a stunning annular solar eclipse will illuminate the sky, appearing as an ominous ring of fiery, glowing light in some parts of the world next week. The spectacle called the Ring of Fire Eclipse will be visible for many people around sunrise on June 10th and will be visible in northeastern North America as well as northern regions of Europe and Asia. These are not signs of peace, but instead signs of doom and destruction and the sword of judgment. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. There shall be great distress in the lands. Many shall fall by the sword, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We have reached the end of this wicked age. The time has come when those who inhabit the earth will be seized with great terror. But if the Most High grant thee to live, thou shalt see after the third trumpet that the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night, and the moon thrice in the day. Revelations chapter 8 and verse 12 And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. The heathens continue to be dismayed, thinking in their minds that these are beautiful great wonders for them to see. They are simply clueless to the fact that they are looking at the signs preceding their punishment. And if you think that these are perilous times that we're living in now, you haven't seen nothing yet. The scriptures foretell the impending doom of the increase of sorrow and the alternation of plagues and destruction. And I beheld flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Behold, said Yahuwah, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness had exceedingly populated the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. It is no coincidence that Juneteenth is in the same month as the solar eclipse. Given all the atrocities that so-called black people continue to go through, should we really celebrate June 19th in the land of our captivity? Are we really free according to scripture? Well, according to our oppressors, we are free. 
Juneteenth is also known as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, and Emancipation Day. It's a holiday celebrating the emancipation of those who had been enslaved in the United States, originating in Galveston, Texas. It is now celebrated annually on June 19th throughout the United States with increasing official recognition. It is commemorated on the anniversary date of June 19th, 1865, announcement of General Order No. 3 by Union Army General Gordon Granger, proclaiming freedom from slavery in Texas. In case you didn't know, Texas was and still is one of the most racist states in the country. When Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation had officially outlawed slavery, Texas and the other states rebelled against the Union, keeping black people enslaved in Texas years after Lincoln's order. The devil has deceived the whole world into thinking that the so-called black people, the true Hebrew Israelites, are free. But as you can see, that was a lie written on paper. The continual cruel treatment of the so-called black people proves otherwise. Just because Yahuwah is slow to anger doesn't mean that he has forgotten all the evil you have done to his chosen people. The solar eclipse on June 10th, 2021 is a reminder to you that he hasn't forgotten and will surely avenge his people. Second Ezra chapter 15 starting at 9 reads, And therefore said Yahuwah, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. As you can see, Yahuwah is not talking about the physical Egypt, but he's talking about the spiritual Egypt that we are currently in now. He said that he's going to smite Egypt with plagues as before, meaning he already done this in the land of Egypt. Then he goes on to say that Egypt shall mourn and the foundations of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Elohim shall bring upon it. It doesn't say that the spiritual land of Egypt will be destroyed by weather machines, global warming, climate change, or wicked scientists. It says that Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Elohim shall bring upon it. It is important that we do research and that we do not celebrate these satanic holidays. Juneteenth holds no righteous power and was given to us by our oppressors. They have given us this day in hopes to trick us into believing that we are free in the land of our captivity. The fire has gone forth from Yahuwah's wrath, and he said, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim. The solar eclipse that takes place on June 10th is a sign of impending doom for the heathens. So while they are out gazing upon their judgment, you, Israel, stay away from their celebration of their destruction. We do not acknowledge their holidays and vain celebrations. Instead, we must pray and glorify our Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We must sing praises to Yahuwah, for He is our Redeemer, He is our only salvation, and His promises will not return void. These great signs and wonders are not just signs of impending doom for the heathens, but these are also signs of redemption for Israel, the so-called black people scattered to the four corners of the earth. The ones who were prophesied to go into slavery by way of ships in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. The hidden ones who do not have an identity. The ones who continue to suffer hate and oppression by the so-called white man. The ones who have no homeland to return to at this present time. 
and the ones that all the nations have formed a confederate against. We are the people who are waking up in the land of our captivity to our true identity. We are the people that the prophets wrote about. The Bible was written for Hebrews by Hebrews. Almost the entire Bible is about the Hebrews going in and out of captivities. Babylonian captivity, Assyrian captivity, Greek, Roman, Arabian, African, and now American, also scattered to the four corners of the earth. This means that the Bible is the so-called black people's history book. And although many people read it, very few understand it. Scores of black people do not understand that the Bible was written about them. This is because when our ancient ancestors arrived to the Americas as slaves, the Bible was the first thing that was presented to them. But instead of it being presented to them as it was written, it was presented to them as their slave masters said it was written. And since slaves couldn't read good English and weren't allowed to read the Bible for themselves, our ancestors had no way of knowing if what their slave masters were teaching them was true or not. As time passed, the laws against slaves reading the Bible were abolished and our ancestors finally began to learn how to read the English language. However, the damage was already done. After decades of being taught the Bible from a white man's perspective, their minds were convinced that the Bible was a white man's book and they could only read it from that one perspective. They then passed this mindset down to their children who passed it down to theirs and so on and so on until it came to us. And this is why we as a people have so much trouble understanding the Bible today because we are reading it from a white man's perspective. They have whitewashed everything, stole our identity, and committed so many evil acts against Yahuwah's chosen people. And this is why we are seeing all of these signs. They are signs of judgment for the other nations and signs of redemption for Israel. What these signs are telling us is that Yahuwah has a plan. He has a plan to destroy Israel's oppressors, and he also have a plan to restore his chosen people. You see, the kingdom of heaven is the new Jerusalem that is going to be built here on earth when the Messiah returns to redeem his people. Revelations chapter 21 and verse 2 reads, And I, Yehuchanan, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down from Elohim out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Pay close attention to how Yehuchanan says he saw the holy city and he called it New Jerusalem. And it is in this New Jerusalem where we will be restored as the nation of Israel again and freed from the rulership of our oppressors. Juneteenth has nothing to do with true freedom. This is why you see our oppressors still afflicting us. And it's no coincidence that June the 10th, the solar eclipse, the sign of judgment, is falling in the same month as Juneteenth, and which falls on June the 19th. All of these signs and great wonders are showing us that Yahuwah is about to turn Israel's captivity. As per Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and 1 through 8. It reads, And it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, the blessings and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where Yahuwah, Elohim, had driven thee, and shall return to Yahuwah thy Elohim, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahuwah thy Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee 
and will return and gather thee from all the nations where Yahuwah Elohim had scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahuwah Elohim gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou may live. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahuwah, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. This prophecy foretells of us, the children of the slaves, being gathered from the four corners of the earth, where we were scattered, and we will be restored back to our homeland. Yahuwah also says that he will put the curses that we have suffered on our oppressors. All of these great signs and wonders that are happening in the heavens as well as on the earth are signs and signals to let us know that Yahuwah is about to restore his people as well as put all the curses on our enemies. Stay prayed up, family. Keep Yahuwah's laws, statutes, and commandments and keep his holy feast days to the best of your ability. Remember Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13 he that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you and your family safe in these very perilous times. And until my next video, I say Shalom.